Hello, visionary change makers. This is Lorna Liana of Entheo Nation, and we are here today with Javier Prato, who is an independent filmmaker from Argentina, and he is on a quest to uncover the curative properties of visionary plant medicines. His personal inquiry sparked the creation of his recent documentary film, Spirit Medicine, which covers ayahuasca, peyote, psilocybin mushrooms, and ibaga. So welcome to uh, an episode of Entheo Nation. Really glad to have you um, on the show, Javier. Thank you so much. So I'd love to hear more about what inspired you to create this documentary film. It sounds very exciting and full of adventurous travel opportunities. So mm -hmm. tell us how it all began. Well, it started in 2013. Uh, it was a series of events. I, a friend of mine sadly passed away of uh, pancreatic cancer. And at the same time, a father of a friend of mine uh, had cancer too, uh, stomach cancer, and uh, he, um, he actually survived. Uh, he, he took uh, for six months this plant mixture. I don't know exactly what, but um, you know, he was able to, uh, to full, have a full reversal of the tumor, and now he's fine. Um, and then also I saw an interview uh, to Sting by Daniel Pinchbeck that uh, Sting was talking about ayahuasca. That was the first time I, I heard about the word ayahuasca and how he was saying how you know, revealing his experience was. So that kind of like put in perspective of my, me wanting to, to learn more, and, but also to, at the same time that I learn more, document it, and then thinking, okay, well, someday maybe I can turn this into a documentary. And that's how it started. So your friend that was able to heal himself with cancer, mm -hmm. and then your other friend that passed away suddenly, uh, could you share with us some of the differences in the way that they approached their cancer treatment and what your takeaway was on why it worked for your friend with stomach cancer and why your friend with pancreatic cancer um, uh, passed away? Yeah, well, my friend with pancreatic cancer, he, he basically did almost like the regular treatment. I mean, not even, the thing is like, he, he cut, he cut a, a too late. That's the thing about cancer, you know, it's like it's too late, there's not too much they can do. Um, so he was late, basically, uh, to, to find a cure or even, you know, do chemo. Uh, the father of a friend of mine, you know, uh, I guess he got lucky, uh, his, his, his uh, kids, uh, you know, said like, you know, the, uh, we want to try something different, and he went for it, and 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 you know that, that's that's what happened. That's how it went. Uh, Do you know if it was uh, through um, you know what kind of uh, treatment? Like, was it through Chinese uh, med me uh, herbal medicine, or was it uh, Ayurvedic? Do you have any? Yeah, it it it's not it's like it's not catalog either Chinese or or or, or different type of medicine. It's actually it's, it's a center in in Argentina. That uh, they they offer this alternative medicine to to fight cancer and uh, and he went and you know, he 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 got better. Um, but again, I don't have full details of of, of what I, and they don't tell you either. Like what is it in it? You know, they they tell you they tell you like it's 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 uh, it's a detoxify like you know it, it alkaline, alkalines your body. So, but I think a lot of these cures is not just physical and what you're taking, but also how much you believe in it. You know, it's like a, you know, 50 50 is like spiritual and, and, and body. That's kind of like what I learned too through my experience here. It's like, it's not like a, you know, a conventional medicine, you take a pill and then, you know, uh, you, if you like it, you get better. But, uh, but, but having the, your mentality and positive aspect of, 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 you know, get better, I think that plays a big role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, why the, the, the step from herbal medicines into visionary medicines? Um, well, I mean, what well, you call visionary, but uh, it's not visionary for everybody. You know, everybody's different. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, for okay. example, no, it's true. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people like me, I, I don't, I, I, I didn't get a lot of visions, like a lot of people I interviewed, like, oh, they see like colors and, and, uh, and jaguars and, and serpents and all that. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's kind of like, I, I guess maybe because I'm, I'm too visual already, but I, I got like downloads, like a lot of, you know, uh, uh, information 
about myself. Um, I felt like the, the the how the earth is suffering. So a big connection to to the earth and and, and people and myself. Um, but it's definitely definitely way more powerful than than in than regular herbal medicines. You know, it's it's it's, it's something that 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 needs to be known and 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 the, actually the the people don't have a perception of medicinal use with psychedelics that's also why i want to like okay get the word out and then you know judge for itself you know based on evidence and, and people's experiences because it's, it's hard to convince people yeah you know i i take in psychedelics and i got cured but i don't, I don't i'm not an addict anymore or or no no ptsd or all that so so it's really remarkable, um, and I was just, you know, we Westerners are just, you know, getting the uh, learning about this when the, these indigenous cultures have been doing it for thousands of years. So they may be into something, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you know, it's kind of interesting. We're only now seeing science um, starting mm -hmm. to explore uh, the use of psychedelics in um, and actual, you know, treatments of uh, uh, different disorders, especially mental disorders. Um, but it's it's. I feel like sometimes it can be a bit of a uphill battle because many of these psychedelic medicines or drugs have been stigmatized as highly dangerous so you know it's kind of interesting people get stuck in this uh, this framework or the, this belief system i recall actually not too long ago I, there was this very um uh, uh insistent individual who wasn't even mm -hmm. in my Facebook friend network, but he, you know, uh, many of my posts are public. And so he um, has been, I guess, following, um, you know, a lot of my updates. And he was very adamant about saying how LSD was very, you know, dangerous. And, you know, more people died using LSD than tobacco or alcohol. I'm like, where were you getting that? Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of evidence, in fact, that the psychedelics are, um, you know, just uh, in terms of their um their uh level of harmfulness and you know how many deaths were actually related to the use of psychedelics it's actually very very small oh, yeah. so i'm curious to know you know in your ex in your research around uh these medicines what do you think the promise or potential um these uh, that psychedelics have for actual healing oh uh a lot uh, it's, it's it's a, it, it treats a lot of psychological uh, issues. I mean, a lot of physical problems that we have. Uh, kind of like it, it starts with the uh, with the with the with the brain, with the psychological you know imbalances and all that. What psychedelic does is like it, it shows you where the problem is. Like it's not just masking the problems or just so you, so you feel better. It kind of like goes to to the root of the problem and it tells you, okay, this is what's wrong. So you either change or you're gonna die, you know. And some people they they and and there's like entities too. Like there's like there's a, this again. Me personally, almost no visions, but there's a lot of like connections with the uh, with with spirit world, and you know, um, and also a lot of um, connections between the people that are doing the ceremony too, like like a psychic uh, connections. Uh, there's a lot of like, oh, I thought about this image. Oh, I thought about that too. So after the ceremony, uh, a lot of people, like, when we uh, talk about it, we come, we come up with the similar visions that they had, you know. So that's very interesting. It's so funny. I had this very um, uh, fascinating uh, five-day boat journey um, with some indigenous uh, uh, tribal leaders and an anthropologist. And this anthropologist was telling me, you know, yeah, um, you know, sometimes you'll have a group of people going into a ceremony and they'll know the same things together. And mm -hmm. he gave me this, like, example. He's like, yeah, there was this one time when it was a group of, you know, 10 leaders going into uh, drink ayahuasca together. And one of the, um, uh, the men was having an affair with the other man's wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so so nobody knew about this before they went into the ayahuasca ceremony, but after the night was over, not only did the man whose wife uh, he was cheating on know that they were having uh -huh. an affair, everybody else in the group knew as well. Yeah. But nothing had been said. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it's, it's common use in indigenous cultures that 
uh, when when the trend, for example, ayahuasca is like, yeah, they have like you know premonitions or visions like that that you are not present physically, but during the, the ceremony you you can see, you actually see and you know do after, like astral projection of of seeing things uh, that are happening. You you may think it's, it's just actually you're making it up, but then you find out that you that what happened there like this really happened, you know. Uh, so it's it's really the it's very interesting, you know. And and again, it's, this is very hard. Like how do you how do you turn this into a film? That's like also my challenge. Like how do you how do you how do you turn all these experiences so people can that who never tried it can 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 get an idea? And that's so that's also I'm, I'm really planning to to recreate. In the documentary, a visionary experience for with a plan. Not only, not just with video, but also um, another uh, addition that I want to add is a, is a 360 degree um, um, ceremony, like with a 360 degree camera, mm-hmm. and you're able to sh- to see, uh, like you know, be there. Like, okay, this is how what is what it is like. <laughs> that and a lot of CGI. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, that would be interesting. I could imagine. I had a friend that was in a in an ayahuasca ceremony, and he was just like, "I looked at my arms and I saw snakes, snakes." Mm. And so I could imagine if you were to recreate that in a film, you know, to have like you know, a person like have these like snakes all of a sudden start appearing and and like you know, winding their way up his body. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You, you know, you have to go <laughs> to a very open mind. You, the, the, the the a lot of people make the mistake of. They they go to to these ceremonies with a pre preconception or, or an idea of what they want, and I mean you have you have to have an intention. But if you go like oh I want to have visions, I want to have visions, you know, or I want to see the snake or whatever, it doesn't work. It's just usually the the, the plan just tells you what you need. It's, it's mm-hmm. not what you want. It's very true. So before you got involved with visionary plant medicines, uh, did you have any belief in the spirit world at all, or belief that there were non-embodied entities that exist all around us? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very open-minded to that. I'm a, I'm a spiritual person. Uh, I believe there's there's definitely more that we don't see. You know, our our perceptions are so limited. Um, so when we when you try this this plants in a way, I think we are enhancing our perceptions and, and consciousness, and we literally tap into a, a, a call it parallel dimension or or something that is right, maybe right next to us, and uh, because we're just limited, we just don't see it. We don't, you know, we don't, we don't know. Yeah. So. Hmm. So, have you noticed any difference between the different plants that you covered? Yes, yes, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, ayahuasca is is very feminine force in a way. Is um, you know, it's, it takes it is like um like the ayahuasca vine. It is a vine. It goes like in, like this, you know, and then it shows you things and, and goes. It's like it's very um, it's very uh, maternal force. Uh, whatever it is, it's the entity of the ayahuasca, the soul, or whatever. Um, mescaline is like, like it's like a ten Red Bulls, <laughs> you know. It's like super, like concentrated, and 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 they use it a lot for back in the day for hunting. They still do for even work on the land, and they give it to to the people, uh, the tribe, to like you know have more energy. The mescaline or yeah, uh, peyote. It's the peyote cactus that has the mescaline. Is the uh, the psychoactive compound on peyote. Um, then uh, salicylic mushrooms is is um, is very colorful. Uh, it's, it's it's also a very you see all the things sharp. Um, you know, some things moving. Uh, I would say for for my experience, again, it, for everybody, it's different. Um, mushrooms were more visual than ayahuasca, for example. But again, this is just me. Uh, a lot of people also have less visions with different. Everybody's wired differently, so. Um, and then uh, Iboga, um, I, I hadn't tried it, I'm looking forward to it, but based on all my interviews that I've done, it looks like it's the most powerful of, of everyone, of all the other ones, even more than I was. Yeah, I know a couple individuals that have worked with, <coughs> excuse me, that have worked with Iboga. Mm-hmm. One second here. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So, 
I know a couple people that have worked with Ibaga, and they had both told me that uh, the experience of working with Ibaga is so strong that it is uh, even hard to move your body because mm -hmm. if you're lying down and you turn your head, turning your head is like going into a wind tunnel. Now, I've never experienced Ibaga yet. I am looking for the right container to experience that in, but that sounds almost uh, frightening to me. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm quite ready for that, but I am very curious. Yeah, yeah, and it's just, I mean, especially going to Africa and, and experience that, that's a big step. It's not just like, okay, I'm going to Mexico. Even though you can go to Mexico and try Iboga, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, that's a different, it's more, you know, you, going to Africa is like you learn about the culture and, and you do the whole ceremony. And I think that, again, it, it's, a, it's a much needed part of the documentary that I'm looking forward to, to experience, you know. And then also, this documentary is not like I'm, I'm just like, you know, I'm behind the camera now. I'm behind the camera, camera, and just ask questions. You know, I I do that, but then also I, I go and, tr and try this these plants, and I I'm, I'm able to to have a first first experience uh, with the viewers. Uh, so I think that that's also great. Um, so, but it's definitely a big biggest step on 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 any regular medicine that is out there. Yeah. So, of the medicines that you've tried already, so you mentioned you tried you've tried ayahuasca. Uh, peyote and psilocybin mushrooms. Have you noticed any difference in the spirit of the plant? And if so, how would you describe them? Yeah, uh, well, I mentioned a little bit about ayahuasca. It's very feminine uh, force spirit. Uh, mescaline, I would say, is a little more masculine. Uh, peyote, peyote, uh, it's a more masculine force. Um, uh, psilocybin mushrooms, I don't know. It was a mixture. I don't know. What I felt about mushrooms is interesting. I had it in, in Mexico, in San Jose del Pacifico, a beautiful place. That's like the, the, the best uh, place to, to try mushrooms, It'd be outside in the, in, uh, in, in, with the trees and all that. What um, state of Mexico was that? Oaxaca. Oaxaca, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, were you with uh, some of the uh, indigenous people that have been working with the psilocybin mushrooms for a long time? Well, I was with a shaman who had been working for <laughs> For many, for many years with with, uh, with his mushrooms, and he offers uh, this. Uh, you know, uh, it's not a traditional uh, masatag uh, uh, ceremony, but it's, it's, you you go to this place. It's called the like, Cuatro Elementos, the Four Elements. And it's not just like okay, here's a mushroom, and, and then you go, you know, <laughs> go to your room. No, no, it's like first you go to um, you take a. Uh, it's called a te temascal. It's like a sweat lodge, um, and then you go in. And then he, he puts this, this volcanic, super hot volcanic rocks inside. And then you sweat like crazy. And then they put like, a, you know, different plants and water. So you, you, you kind of like you do a cleansing there first. Then you, you go out after like 15, 20 minutes. You take a shower with the tea. It's actually a tea. You know, you shower with that. And then through this whole process, at the end, you have the mushroom on a, on a cup of tea. And then you drink the tea with the mushroom. So it kind of like, you know, it, it clears not just your pores, but, uh, you know, it, that's what they call it, the four elements. Like, uh, it, it, it really, like, it enhances the experience with the mushroom a lot. Mm. And then uh, when I tried it, I, I, I really felt like that the, that the mushroom was enjoying my, my, my consciousness. I, I felt that, that, I was a mushroom, and I had, I had legs, and I can walk, you know, and I felt like I was a kid again. I was like, yeah, I was like enjoying, you know, I was just walking around the forest and, you know, uh, looking at the, everything, you know, it's like, it, it was beautiful, but, but it's re I really felt that, and I think that's true. In a way, I think, because the mushroom, uh, it's not dead. You're not drinking a dead mushroom. It's there, even if, it, if it's dry, they're, they're still there. There's got to be a soul there. You know, hanging there because it's not dead. So when you drink that, when you eat that, I, I, I think you, you, that entity or whatever that energy, in, in experience being inside someone else, and, and I, I think that's true. I, that's what I said. So you were eating fresh mushrooms rather than dried mushrooms. Yes. Hmm. Do you think there's any difference between eating fresh mushrooms versus dried? Oh, of mushrooms? course, they have more, you know, the fresher is, is more powerful. Uh, so you need maybe less quantity, but uh, oh, I didn't know that. 
Wow. And, but there are different kinds of mushrooms too. So was there a particular species of a visionary mushroom that your shaman was working with or had a relationship with? Yeah, I, I don't recall exactly that the type of mushroom, but it was, you know, psilocybin contained mushroom. There's a, a lot of, of different mushrooms that contain the psilocybin. Mm-hmm. So what was the experience of the mushroom as you, Javier? Did, did the mushroom like being you? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah totally. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine it's kind of fun because we think, oh my god, you know, I'm going to eat some magic mushrooms, how fun. And the uh, mushrooms are like, hey, how fun, I get to be Javier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, okay, so tell me more about uh, peyote. Where did you go to experience that medicine and what was that experience like for you? Yeah, I, I went to northern Mexico. Um, I, I met a, a shaman that he actually travels around the world doing peyote ceremonies. Um, and I went there and actually he was coming from, I think from Italy, from another ceremony. And I picked him up in the airport and I drove him back to his, to his uh, town, which is like a 12 hour, yeah, between 12, 13 hour drive. Uh, to his town and he invited me to spend there a couple of weeks and uh, it was just an, another amazing experience a very contrast between the south of Mexico which is like a lot of plants and, and a lot of rain this is like dry as hell it's like, it doesn't, doesn't rain for like months and when I got there it didn't rain for like six months and so I, I went there and you know they, they live a pretty simple life uh, that there's no power uh, they, there's no water. They just use a the river next, you know, close by. And their main food is corn. You know, they live by out of you know uh, tortillas, <laughs> uh, very great tortillas. <laughs> um, and then they, you know, big community. They they have, they, you know, these people they don't have like three kids. They have like ten, <laughs> like fifteen. <laughs> You know, it's a wor- it's a rural workforce. You know? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, and then, uh, and then they have the the, the peyote. Uh, what surprised me is that uh, it's not just like you actually eat the the cactus. They have it in, in uh, powder form, and you actually put it on water and you drink it. Mm-hmm. So they, they, the way they do that is because um, why? Is because it just lasts longer. Uh, they can last for for a year or more uh, without losing the effect. And so they dry it, and then they they they, they put it in powder form, and then you 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 drink it like. Uh, like any drink, you know. Um, the experience is, like I said, is very, very uh, energetic. I, I felt like I wanted to go run, you know, like in the middle of the desert. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it was very, very, very energetic. Uh, the, the peyote, um, and, he, and that's when they do the ceremonies there. Is they they are, they are awake for I don't know I was like for like almost two days like people celebrating like nonstop. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah and, and then yeah so that, that's kind of like the experience and then we are now we have the medicinal side of it uh, which is uh, each plant has their own beneficial side of of, of, of of one is like the experience like okay what do I get but then you have the what ben- medicinal benefit you get from peyote there's a, there's not a lot of research. Very, very little research. Yeah, I haven't really encountered a lot in in my research because, um, yeah, it seems to be a lot of people are, well, a lot of the science that I see coming out are focused on the, you know, potential therapeutic benefits of psilocybin mushrooms for healing depression and PTSD and end of life anxiety. And then, of course, you know, there's like ayahuasca and like, you know, addiction and, you know, potential, you know, curing like, you know, um, uh, Crohn's disease and, you know, other types of, um, uh, you know, illnesses. But I've heard nothing about peyote, although I, in the communities that I'm a part of who, um, uh, that are largely Native American church communities, I've uh, certainly heard that it's very effective in helping people with addiction issues, especially uh. addiction to heroin and cocaine um, and alcohol to be able to uh, kick the habit. So, you know, yeah. what, what else have you discovered about the medicinal properties of peyote? Well, uh, also alcohol, alcoholism, you know, which is kind of like addiction. Um, but all the all the plants are like treat similar symptoms. It's not just like okay, ayahuasca is for this, peyote is for that, or no, 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 no. It's like 
it, it's similar. One plan may be more effective, but they all kind of like treat the same symptom, you know? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it seems like there is certainly an overlap. It seems like um, the medicines that you've uh, uh, been researching for your uh, documentary are all very effective in the treatment of addiction uh, addictions. So I would say that um, you know, that's one big overlap they share. Uh, I'm curious to know, I, I didn't get to ask you a little uh -huh. bit earlier, um, the people that you spent time with in Mexico, um, were they the huicholes? Right, the huicholes. Uh -huh. Aha, okay. Uh -huh. So you were in a traditional huichol community where, you know, where, where people wearing their traditional clothing with the beautiful mm -hmm. embroidery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, again, very simple, very simple life. I, mean, I was like, of course, no, it's no cell phone. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. So it was very, uh, it, it's interesting how, like, you know, they're, they're happy. I mean, they, well, I, 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 one of the kids from, from the Shaman I met, he's like an amazing uh, artist. You know, he, he, a lot of uh, the, he was like drawing, a lot of beautiful drawings, but mostly the, the female witch elves, they, they, Constantly doing stuff like necklaces or, or uh, you know, shirts, you know, hats, and that, that's that's constant and, and that's part of their, their culture, you know, to, to share. Um, they also have they make this this great uh, it's like a, uh, a um, alcoholic drink just out of uh, I forget the name exactly now, but uh, it's uh, made of corn, you know, dry corn for days and then. They become alcohol, and then you drink it. It's like, oh, <laughs> like, you know. Um, and then the, the it's just, um, and the, just a simple life. That's what I got from it. Um, one little experience that I, 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 I don't want to take too much time with it, but uh, when we went, they went before the ceremony. They go hunting to to have food, and we went to to the desert, and I followed with my camera. I was like around eight of them. And for it was a desert, but with a, mount, a lot of mountains, just uh, very dry trees, pine trees. And I got lost in the fucking desert. And I, I thought, that, okay, well, maybe if I go out on top of the mountain, I'll be able to see where they are. Nothing. I was like, what the hell? And I, I was like, I only had like a little, little bottle of water. It didn't rain for six months. And I had no idea what direction to go. So I was able to actually get my my uh, uh, directions i actually i figure okay i took a picture of of before i took pictures of the of the mountain so that i use that as a guide to see okay when i took that picture on my right oh that's the mountain that i that i passed by maybe i should go that direction mm. so and then i decided okay do that and it was like around five to six hours and you know again i ran out of water for a moment i, I was going like slow uh, but then I said, fuck it, I better do it before it gets, you know, sand down. I started running. I didn't care about getting a scratch or anything. Um, and then something happened, which is, again, you know, was like, this is weird. Uh, but it started raining. <laughs> After six months, no rain. That day. And the day before, they do, they, they would show people, they do a lot of, um, it's called um, offerings, ofrendas, mm -hmm. you know, to the gods. So they, they, they pray, you know, for rain. And they pray for prosperity, all that. And that's you know the day uh, earlier that day. That's what we did. We did. We 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 did an offering for the rain, and that happened. And it started raining, and I was able. I was drinking water from from <laughs> from the rocks. You know, that was like amazing. Um, and I wasn't very worried. I think uh, because I don't know. I maybe I should have, but but I didn't. And I I finally I found my way back. Um, so, yeah, that's the lost in the desert section. <laughs> wow. But were you uh, still, were you, were, did you, were you on peyote or was it on, an, no, on, no, on a different no. day? Yeah, it was before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that would be interesting to be also out in the wilderness uh, on, on peyote as well. Were you, were you, when you were working with this medicine, were you mostly in uh, an, um, an environment on the, uh, like a, outside. inside or outside? Outside. Oh, so you're outside? oh, wonderful. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but and again, when you when you're there, like it's dry. You only see like uh, you know dirt and, and dryness. It's not all um, a lot of see just the sky and the ground. 
Mm -hmm. And yeah. are they uh, in ceremony during the daytime or in the uh, nighttime? No, oh, it lasts for day and night. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. It, 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 it's the, the, they have what, they have two things. One is the celebration of the peyote. They call it uh, uh, la fiesta del peyote, you know, the party of the peyote. That's something. That's 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 the, that's one thing. And then they have the pilgrimage uh, to to uh, you know they go to get the peyote. So every March they go there and then they, they it's called the hunt the peyote. And that's when when they they, they that's the game. They do, they've been doing this for thousands of years and to to to. to to grab the, the peyote and then bring it home. And also the big struggle that's happening, uh, now it's a little better, but uh, a couple of years ago it was hard, like uh, the, 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 the mine uh, uh, companies, you know, they're doing to, 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 to uh, damage the earth uh, to get the mining corporations to, to are doing the, the, the you know, uh, the, 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 they're basically using the witch old land to, to, to prosper the land, but at the same time they're contaminating the land and it's interfering with their witch old traditions. So, but again, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a community that I've been doing, they've been living for forever, <laughs> you know, for thousands of years and, and they maintain that, that way of living, you know, it's, it's, it's the last pre-Columbian culture in the world, literally. Mm. Wow, that's really fascinating. So we're about at the end of this segment, but I'd love to leave you with my last uh, favorite question, which mm -hmm. is uh, in your experience of, um, you know, working with visionary plant medicines, what was the most far out visionary experience that you've had? Mm -hmm. And can you describe that story for us, please? Yeah, um, well, it was one time, I tried ayahuasca around 10 times. Uh, the first, the first one was not that great because I had a very bad cold, and I guess the medicine worked on my body to, to feel better. I didn't get, you know, just like I felt great the next day. Um, I, the, the, the experience um, was in a way that I was actually able to to see myself from like from a different perspective, and I, I was like I was able to see different versions of me. How how am I gonna if I if I if I yeah, I mean, like, I was so myself very successful and, and very sick, uh, and and I saw that 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 kind of like premonition of, of okay, if I do this today, I'm gonna end up like this, and if I do this today, I'm gonna end up like that. I was I was able to get a, a clear image of where I'll, I'll be going, and not just one once, but many. Um, but also, I kind of like um, I was able to to see the, my, my past, you know, like very from childhood memories to to recent memories and again it was like really I would say well, I was watching like a movie from a different perspective and that's something that is shared a lot with the people that, that uh, not everybody but so some of some people they share the same and how did that help you oh well you know it helped me to understand it better um, I kind of like um, I was very shy when I was a kid um, um, and kind of like I was able to like maybe process that like why why was why I'm so afraid of people or or you know shy um, so I, I was able like to you know to to to, to find that the why and then you know uh, it, 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 it does it's not quick it's not like you know you take the medicine and the next day oh you know you're a new person it takes time you know the medicine keeps working on you. For, for days, you know, even months, and, and you, and, you know, maybe you one day, you're like uh, any regular day, and then you, you realize, oh, that's why this happened. Uh, again, because you're, you're actually able to, to see it from a different perspective, and, and that's a huge, huge um, medicinal value for every, anybody, you know. Great. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming and joining us today on At The Nation. And I want to ask you, um, how can the audience best stay in touch with you? And is there anything that you would like to share with them in terms of uh, the work that you're working on or a resource that you think might be helpful? Yeah, well, I'm, uh, we're launching a crowdfunding campaign uh, the next week. Um, so, you know, anybody who would like to be part of it in the making of this film, they, they just, this, 
go to uh, spiritmedicinemovie.com and that will, will, will link to the crowdfunding campaign. Uh, people can leave their, their, their information and then we'll you know, keep up the, updated. So that's a way to, to get in touch with me on the documentary. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And I look forward to hearing more about your travels. So uh, you mentioned um, a bit earlier that you hadn't yet gone to Africa uh, to work with uh, Iboga. With, uh, right, when not are yet. you hoping to, to do that? I'm hoping that today in July, at the end of July. Excellent. So we'll be sure to keep an eye out for any uh, news from the field as well. All right. All right. Thank you so much. And you have a beautiful rest of your day. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.